Hi folks, a bit of a different project today. What you're seeing here on the screen is a group of saplings of American chestnut trees. Um, the American chestnut was one of the most productive trees in early America. Uh, I've seen pictures from the late 18, early 1900s of chestnut trees that look like almost miniature redwoods. They were huge, five, six feet in diameter at the base. And they liked chestnut lumber because it was hard, but it wasn't quite as heavy to work with as oak. Uh, it was great for not just furniture, but construction and so on. And what happened is, I don't know, it was sometime in the first half of the 20th century, uh, a blight hit them and just about completely wiped them out. So now there is this effort by people to try to reintroduce them and they've done some hybridization so that they can create blight resistant trees. Uh, I found all this out from a friend of mine at church and he was started to do this and he said, hey, do you want some chestnut saplings to plant on your farm? And I said, sure, I'd love to reintroduce chestnut trees here. Uh, I'm never going to see it, but somebody, one of my ancestors might have some good uh, timber to harvest or, you know, chestnuts to eat if people want to eat them. I mean, that's up to them, too. So, I am here on my hillside. Uh, on top of the hill there is where the crosses are that you've seen in my other videos. Uh, what I was told was I need to find a spot that has lots of sunshine and all in other words a southern exposure which this hillside is I'm facing uh, north basically here a little northwest um, and also well-drained soil so since this is on the side of the hill it will be well-drained soil it won't be too wet for them after they get established now there is um, my friend gave me the name of the and and there are videos on YouTube about how to do this I watched them the guy who is, uh, that he connected with is um, Alan Nichols. He's from um, New York State and does a lot of videos about these chestnut trees. If you want to, you know, type in Alan Nichols um, chestnut tree planting or something like that, it'll come up on YouTube. Uh, he gave me a link for one that I watched about how to plant these. It's a little bit tricky and you've got to protect them from the critters for a number of years. So. Um, and he also suggested that I use this, I don't know if you can see that on film or not, this grid pattern about 15 to 20 feet square. These seedlings will go in and then a more improved version that's coming down the road they want to plant right in the middle to create um, you know, better pollinization and then more disease resistance so that the future stands would even be better. So that's the plan here today. I've got to dig holes to put them in. I'll show you that. And then after can see he started them here I don't want my paperwork to blow away he started them sorry he started them here in milk cartons or orange juice cartons whatever the case is um, you can see that there and I've got to plant them obviously I'm going to take them out of there but I'll show you how how they suggest even doing that um, and then he gave me a number of these little mesh cages, wire mesh cages to put around them. I don't have as many as I have seedlings here. I think I have about six or seven seedlings here. Uh, but he gave me four cages, so I'll start with those. And then I'm just going to have to use chicken wire because I don't have any more of this little quarter inch or half inch, whatever this is, mesh. But then these will protect them while they're young. And then when they get older and bigger, the plan is to put a bigger cage around them to keep like the deer from rubbing them and doing buck rubs on them and things, the mice to chew at them and things like that. So I will come back to you. My first step is going to be i got to clear this area out a little bit, take my string trimmer and knock some of the grass down so I can see what I have. So shrubs here I'm going to cut down with my pole electric pole pruner get those out of the way and somewhere in this region right in here is where I'll plant all these trees and hopefully maybe my granddaughters or somebody else grandchildren uh, grandsons great grandkids who knows will be able to um, you know enjoy a nice grove of chestnut trees here someday 
According to what my friend said, these should start bearing seeds, bearing fruit in about five years. Now, I don't know. These he just planted a couple months ago, so they've grown very quickly. So we'll see what happens after I put them out. The first uh, thing you have to do, though, is protect them from too much sun. Apparently, they get sunburned. I didn't know that. but um, So I will be putting uh, some cardboard. I have some old cardboard with me on the inside of the tubes, kind of surrounding them for a few weeks until they get more acclimatized. So I'll come back to you, and hopefully I'll be able to give you future videos of, of their progress. So hang in there. I'll come back to you when we're working. All right, as you can see, I have my hole dug. Just to give you an idea of the depth of it, there's a small sledge, three-pound sledge. You can see, oops, you can see how far down the hole it goes. It's maybe a foot or so deep. Uh, for this these size plants, it should be fine. Now, one of the other things he suggests is that you drive a stake into the hole. Now, he suggests a six-footer. I don't have six-footer, so I used what I had. This is just an old oak garden stake. The idea is that's going to attach to the uh, mesh tube to hold it in place so that it can't get knocked over or uh, you know damaged by critters. So it also helps to protect the plant, then gives it some stability of the tree as it grows. So the next step is going to be to plant this first first of the trees into this hole. We'll backfill it with dirt, and then um, he suggests then you put your cage on. And then after that, he suggests putting a piece of weed block fabric uh, inside the tube, but around the, the base of the plant so that no other weeds can grow up in here with it, that it'll be kind of free from that. So I'll walk you through this as I do it, but I'm just telling you that's the plan now. So, um, And, you know, I wanted to just mention one other thing quickly. You know, people who aren't from the country would say, well, how can you be planting trees if you cut timber? How can you use all this firewood and stuff like that, and yet here you are trying to plant trees? Well, this is how country people are, folks. We don't look at nature as sacred. We don't look at nature as something to be worshipped or preserved like in a museum. Nature is to be managed responsibly. Trees are crops that need to be managed responsibly. Responsibly. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to help reestablish a new species. Someday I hope and pray that my grandkids or great grandkids can harvest some of these for great timber. Of course, by then I would imagine that there'd be more than just these little few that I've planted. But the idea is it's multi generational crop planting. Other, unlike corn or soybeans or whatever, or garden things that you plant every year and harvest every year, these you plant once in a lifetime and maybe. The next generation comes along to harvest, and so on. So this is true stewardship of the environment, and it's keeping it healthy, and it's giving us what we need as human beings, whether it's furniture or fuel or fruit or whatever it may be. Trees are meant to be used, not just looked at and hugged. <laughs> So at any rate, sorry about that rant, but I felt I needed to say that. So I'll come back to you when I get this ready to go into the ground. Okay, to minimize damage to the roots or trauma to the roots in transplanting, or planting I should say, instead of just pulling them up out of the containers uh, from the potting soil, what was suggested is cut one side off of the, the milk carton and cut the bottom off and set it in that way. Then when you fill dirt around it, then you slide the rest of the milk container out of the hole you don't want to keep that in but then that way it's the roots are still pretty much intact and they're now now well bedded in the new soil so let, that's the next step I'll come back to you I'm sorry I can't show you doing this because again it need, takes two hands and I don't have a third hand for the camera okay as you can see I've got the seedling in the ground it's covered with uh, other dirt and of course I do have the cage on it and I just attach the cage to the stake with a couple zip ties so that'll hold that in place now I just have to do two more things and this is finished put the weed barrier 
on the on the dirt there right at the base of the seedling and then put some cardboard around the outside to kind of give it some sunshade. Okay, I'll come back to you on that. Okay, we've got the weed block down on the on the dirt below around the trunk, bottom of the trunk of this seedling. And then also this piece of cardboard is kind of shielding it from a lot of direct sunlight. Uh, it can still get plenty of light and the sun is high in the sky right now so it will get some direct sunlight, not much, but we just don't want it to have an all day sun at this point. When it gets bigger and it's uh, seasoned, hardened, then we'll get rid of the cardboard. I think the guy said maybe two weeks you keep that on. I'll have to review that. But um, after that then it'll just grow. I watered it a bit. The ground wasn't bad. It wasn't dry. But I watered it a bit. I'll have to keep an eye on that until the roots take, you know, take real well to make sure that it can get the moisture it needs or if it gets dry. And then also, uh, I think my friend said like the plant feed that you give to azaleas, it'd be a good thing to fertilize it with, but I haven't gotten that far yet. So at any rate, number one of our American chestnut tree seedlings is now in the ground and secured and god willing it will grow and help to repopulate the species i think i think there were a number of chestnut trees on our farm years and years ago i think some of the old wood i've seen in the shed uh were che was chestnut wood and i don't know if some of the house and barn framing was chestnut i don't know my old woods that well but if i can be a part of reestablishing this hey great now i'm going to do the rest of them here i'm not going to I'll bother to do a video to show you all the rest of those because it's the same procedure over again. Um, but I'll try to give you maybe a, a picture after they're all in place or something like that or as they grow. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and do what you can to live life out in the country on a shoestring. Thanks for watching.